Sam Harris's foundation of objective morality is based on well-being. Do you find any relationship between your view and Sam's? Yes and no. So I actually am very inspired or very, um, inspired is the wrong word, um, very happy to see Sam doing what he is doing. Because what Sam is basically trying to establish, which I think he's right, unfortunately, he, he won't read Ayn Rand, or if he reads Ayn Rand, he doesn't get it, because she's already done this. What he's trying to do is show the world that there is no difference, that, that you can get an art from an is. So he's trying to bridge the is art gap. So the idea is this, there's facts out there in the world, but how do those facts out there in the world tell us what we should do? Or in other words, how do you get more? From reality is there a science of morality and if there's a science of morality how do we practice it what do we look for what is objective knowledge in morality what is morality what's the purpose of morality so sam i mean I, I admire this sam is one of the few intellectuals in the world i think and one of the few thinkers even certainly in the recent past who believes that one can generate an art from an is, and who believes that morality is a science. And he even kind of gets what the science is about, which is well-being. It's whose well-being, which he is confused about, and, uh, and which creates problems for his conclusions, creates problems for his vision of morality. But the problem is the way he addresses the is art is superficial and it, it gets him in trouble. So for Ayn Rand, the is art, the way you bridge the is art is you ask yourself, in a sense, what is the purpose of morality? Well, the purpose of morality is to discover the values, the values that one should pursue in life, the values that are crucial. It's, it's about choosing what is right and what is wrong in the most important decisions in your life that shape your life. But what are values? What should you pursue, right? What are values? Values are things one acts to gain or keep. But what is the, what's implicit in the term value? That one is acting for something. What is the, it, it means that you have options, you have choices. So Sam has a bit of a problem without free will. How do you have choices? So we're, we're going to leave that alone because I don't think you have choices if you don't have free will. But I think Sam is confused about free will. I, I, I don't think he actually believes there's no free will. He just doesn't understand what free will is. Um, but so you're confronted with choices. And then the question is, what are those choices? What is the fundamental choice? What is the choice that makes all of the choices possible? And who confronts those choices? And, th and this is really important. And this is, I think, to a large extent, uh, uh, something Sam skips. You confront those choices as an individual. Morality is about you as an individual and how you live. And the fundamental choice you as an individual face is existence or non-existence, life or death. Morality depends on your choice to live. Once you choose to live, then the issue of values becomes relevant. If you choose not to live, then it doesn't matter what you do. You, you don't want to live. You, you, you. So there's no, there's no thing to strive towards. There's no purpose. There's nothing. There's zero. There's blank. Once you choose to live, the question then is, what value should you pursue in order to live? We are not programmed automatically in order to do that. In order to live as a human being, in order to flourish and be happy as an individual human being. Now, Sam is mixed about this, right? Because on the one hand, he acknowledges that the purpose of morality is to guide us towards flourishing. But he also doesn't want to give up altruism. So he views 
flourishing thing in some collectivistic utilitarian perspective. And he views morality not as something you as an individual do, you as an individual choose that helps guide your life as an individual, but it's much more of a society. How should society act? What is moral for society? How do we achieve flourishing for the most people or most people or all people or something like that? And and he can't give up on that kind of implicit collectivism, that implicit altruism that he's grown up with, that he's absorbed from Christianity of all places, him, the big critic of religion, can't give up on religious morality. But that's exactly, he's holding on to that while at the same time talking about flourishing, which is good, but talking about flourishing in the context of human beings as a group rather than human beings as individuals. So it's um, it's very uh, it's it's very unfortunate because Sam is super smart, super thoughtful, a, a real valuer of reason and of science and of truth and of reality. And he, and he's trying to do the right thing. He's trying to bridge from ises to oughts, a bridge that Ayn Rand crossed, solved a problem in philosophy, Ayn Rand solved. And he just can't do it. And it's, he, you have the same problem with him with, with free will. And he also thinks that too much of what it means to flourish, what it means to be successful, what it means to be happy, I think has to do with chemistry, purely with chemistry, right? And that you can, if you could manipulate the chemistry, that would be the moral, that, that, that's morality. You know, it's just, just not true. It's our actions out there in reality. It's the chemistry shh, it, it, it is, is part of it. One can't ignore the chemistry. And our actions cause the chemistry. But just stimulating the chemistry independent of our actions and our thoughts would not generate the same idea, would not generate the same thing. So it's sad because, and and again, he can't give up completely on the altruism, on the collectivism, and and it really, really, really is sad because Sam Harris is exactly the kind of person objectivism needs. Uh, Articulate um, somebody who talks in a language that people understand, somebody who has a massive following, a successful writer, a good speaker, calm, reasonable, collect, and yet, you know, ruthless with his enemies, which, which I think is, is good. So I admire Sam Harris, and, and I think if we had Sam Harris on our side, we'd be way ahead of the, of the curve in terms of our success. Unfortunately, we don't, and, and none of us, None of us are as successful as Sam at building an audience. None of us objectivists are successful as Sam building an audience and, and holding that audience and, and engaging with that audience. And uh, therefore, we're, we're way behind. We're way, de- way behind. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, somebody's asking about Jordan Peterson and his life is suffering. I mean, I've talked about that in the past. I've done whole shows about... Uh, about uh, Jordan Peterson. By the way, it's not fair. If you if you want to ask a question on YouTube, you should contribute five bucks, like uh, uh, like Stefan did, uh, to get your a- question answered. Because I, I, you know, I, I shouldn't be discriminating here. On Facebook, unfortunately, there's no feature that allows you to make a contribution and ask a question. But on YouTube, there is. So use it. It's it's a great tool for the Iran Book Show money to support our existence because uh, it's tough. It's tough. So I'm a huge admirer of, of Sam Harris and, uh, and uh, you know, more so than I admire Jordan Peterson uh, because I think Sam epistemologically is better. He, he's more on the side of reason and science than Peterson is. Peterson is too much on the side of uh, mysticism, uh, of uh, primacy of consciousness. Uh, than than I would like, and um, but I I you know in, I I encourage you all to listen to both. 
Uh, and, you know, the, the idea of life is suffering uh, that Jordan Peterson uh, does is just, is just wrong. I mean, it's just a, f a false way in which to look at the world. It's a false way to build up an ethic or to build up a, a, a philosophy of life or a psychology of life. It's, it's, uh, it's completely inappropriate. It, 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 he's wrong. Um, and, uh, you, you know, it's, it's like uh, you, you've got this fundamental choice between life and death, and you're saying that death is the more fundamental of the two, the more basic of the two. Now, death is inevitable, but if you choose life, so is life. So um, uh, death doesn't require much effort. Life does. So death is the default in a sense. It's the, it's the lazy man solution, the lazy person solution. But that is no excuse to make life as suffering as your starting point in psychology or in ethics or in morality, which is what Jordan Peterson does, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, one day, one day, hopefully, we'll have a conversation with Jordan and, and talk to him about it. Not that I think I can convince him. I can't. But I, I think the conversation will be interesting for you guys.